What's up everyone, this is Share Talking, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be talking about the updates to the global reuniverse tier list made by me, Sojai, with the help from the community. Well, there were plenty of changes and you can see that the triple S tier is a little more crowded than before. We got plenty of good styles, that's true. And we added all of them, we have an update history here, if you can check. You will see everything that was added and when they change it. We do have some work to do, but I just want to say something about what changed it here. Well, we have Bunei on the top here. We consider having access to the Inheritances version of Bunei. Uh, very good style for boss fights, so she's here because of that. Uh, Bertrand is now on the top because he can use Abaddon hands now and he's pretty good on doing that. He got this by inheritance of his story style so it is accessible to everyone. So this changed his placement as well. We have Gustav here, he's working pretty well. We also have Rook and Saruin. Those characters are still performing super well, all of them on the top are still prime in my opinion. Then we got some new styles that change it, stuff like this witch's daughter that was changed in global, now she has access to Aerodyne, a very powerful skill that another character has access to, and that is this version of Bune. So, now you can totally replace this Bune if you want, but I believe that having all versions of Bune together still offer more value, although which daughter can heal, something that uh, Bune cannot. So she can either replace Bune or either replace one of the versions of Princess White Rose. But since Christmas White Rose is on the front, because we are considering her inheritance, this version of Witch's Daughter don't really need inheritance, it just gets better if you inherit from her UDX style. That's why she's so high on this list. We also changed the placement of some other styles like Popelia and Red Grades. This was made on the last update and people reacted well to this. We have Alosis on this point. I think he's a very good farmer. We are always debating about Rupina being on the top, but because she's very restricted to farming and also to having full HP, this reduces her um, usage for some strategies but still a pretty good style that's pretty high here anyway uh there's also the release of gustav he got this placement here he works well but he's not the best damage dealer he's not a prime one we got zosma a character that works well for damage and also for intelligence debuff he will be compared to the next character that we get that's monica there is an anniversary Monica that can also debuff intelligence, but he goes for a slash, he goes for a pierce, they compete on the debuff part, but they both can do good damage on long fights, so you can still use them together or in different content. Uh, we also got the release of Wicked Witch, that's actually pretty interesting, I even placed her a little higher than the past Evelyn, although she may not offer too much if you already have this one, it's more of a gamble to summon here. This Wicked Witch can work well on stages on World Tower, she can debuff Will while trying to inflict Paralyze or Poison without having to use an active skill. So, uh, it relies on RNG, but she at least works well to replace the usage of two characters, you only need Wicked Witch. So, this was also pretty good. We got the release of Tu Kwai and Young Xenon, and I do have them very close to each other because they are just very good. I don't know which one is better, it's just hard to justify. Tu Kwai can be operating like Christmas or Pina. She has an AoE Sun and Slash, and then she has a AoE Sun and Slash with cheaper cost and keep cycling about that. Uh, but Tu Kwai doesn't have the same damage passives, although has a little higher power. The opener attack is not as strong, but it's a fast attacker on the last that works pretty well. Then Xeno is very strong, both for single target or AoE. He does have some inheritances as well, but he does not open with uh, Noble Cross like this version of him does. And he can still inherit light speed from his S style that was given out. So very powerful, stable damage, but uh, for farming you may still use this one, yes. So some other options were uh, Time Lord, this guy here can also instant kill AoE targets, but UDX Death is better. I still consider UDX Death better because her constant damage just makes this so good. Uh, oh yeah, UDX the Hub is right here. And we got the other character here, Torpid. This Torpid is pretty strong for AoE farming if you can place it first before some other AoE attacker like Saruin. People are using him to buff Saruin damage even further and since it's also slash, this works pretty well. 
so let me see other styles. We have Arluge. He's not so high on the list because Arluge is not exactly so good as a farmer. He's very strong for a ward tower. He gets even better by inheritance. Uh, so you see this eye, it's needed. You could just uh, place him very close to Wicked Witch as well. Uh, it will not change. When you need Orluge, he'll work pretty well. But you will not need Orluge all the time. That's the only problem with him. But that's the same case with most debuffers and status inflictors. This is something that uh, it's made in the game. You don't need it all the time, but when you need, they shine. Uh, we have the new Barthelemy here on this position. This new Barthelemy is pretty, pretty strong. And here in Global, he has a passive that is pretty similar to this version of Boston. So that he can increase agility of all targets. And maybe if you are facing a very hard challenge by having them together alongside other agility buffers, this will help. That's the reason why I use Shandu. And that's why he's also here on the double S tier. And he's a pretty powerful damage dealer if you have inheritance as well. But that does not mean that he totally needs it. He's also pretty good even without it. The inheritance comes from this version. It's a scatter explosions. Now he's the best scatter explosions or a multi heat for heat in boss fights. Pretty powerful character and I really enjoy playing with him. Uh, we also have the release of Polka. Let's see where Polka is. This point here. This Polka is good, but he's trying to be everything at once, a farming character and boss fighter, and that's why he is not so high on the list. You can get this attack into the other version of Polka that has higher power, this one here, so that he's here with inheritance, meaning that you need to at least get scatter explosions or the attack on this one to perform better. Then we also have the new version of Liz that's just close to this other version of Polka. Uh, she does have something unique, a passive that can decrease damage but has a chance to trigger. She can debuff intelligence and heal and has a fast attack too. So uh, a character that's trying to do a lot of things again. It's not a meta character but will help in some very specific occasions. Uh, we also got some other style, a free style of Flurry that's actually pretty good. I'm not so sure if he's better than the other ones that we have down but the S part of the cheerleader need some revisions and you can just say here on the comment section if you agree or not what we need to change that we'll be doing this on the next updates uh, a lot of things change it to be honest like this version of Tatiana is not so strong anymore because we have Rook and there's not many reasons to use her now we also only gave an S grade to this version of T260G because she's pretty hard to use she has a very strong AoE attack but her single target cycle is pretty complicated and works well on raid but even when you try to use her max potential the damage just doesn't justify too much so there's that as well besides this we got some platinum styles like this ottoman that is exactly pretty high here there is also this evelyn that's pretty good also this other one here scorn that is exactly very powerful as well they are platinum styles that compete with premium ones easily just like flurry flurry is a welfare that competes with many other premium units from the past so uh, there is also this version of shindu that's an aoe attacker that we consider him well but it's just that he's competing with many slash attackers um he cannot be better than shiel that's a very good utility character that people that skip it shira can still use there was another platinum that we got that was this version of albert that's actually interesting but Kind of hard to use, only for boss fights, in my opinion. There is also Leonid. This Leonid is actually pretty powerful, but he takes time to just keep using his skill number one to be good. He also has an AoE endurance debuff that can work for some stages. The enemies are getting high endurance this time, so uh, very good. There is also um, Khalid. This Khalid has a counter attack that's pretty similar to Noel. And I don't know if I talk it about, but there's also this Madeline. This Madeline here has a slash buff to the party that works pretty well when farming. So I guess that's about it, guys. This is the update to the list. If you don't agree, please use the comment section. We see the games by our eyes, but I know that there are plenty of different gameplay styles. People evaluate some characters more than others. And this tier list cannot be perfect, but with your help, we can make it better. Thanks so much for watching this video, please subscribe if you haven't, and if you want to support the channel, there are links in the description of the video. I hope to see you soon in the next one. Bye.